All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the last session of Virtual June, uh, not Virtual June, Virtual Gel, excuse me. Uh, this is the student panel here. So we have a lot of great student panelists here. Hope you can all see them. My name is Julian Moreno. I'm a senior from the city of San Francisco, and I'm uh, going to graduate pretty soon with a history major. I'll be your host for today's special show. Um, and why don't I give uh, everyone a chance just to introduce themselves briefly. Um, I'll start with uh, Ryan here. Yeah, hi, um, my name is Ryan. I'm a current senior at Gonzaga studying accounting and management information systems. And um, I'm originally from Manila, Philippines, but I'm uh, moving to Seattle, yeah. Fantastic, Megan, why don't you go next? Hi everyone, my name is Megan. I'm from Denver, Colorado. I am a nursing major and I'm a junior. Great, Megan, thank you. I see our participants are 175 and growing. Great to see you all. All right, JJ, take it away. Uh, hey guys, I'm JJ. I'm a senior from uh, North Andover, Massachusetts. Thanks, JJ. Appreciate it. Okay, Alex, you're next. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm a junior studying sociology with minors in communications and women and gender studies, and I'm from Seattle. All right, fantastic. Holly, why don't you go next? I'm Holly. I'm a sophomore from Muckleteal, Washington, and I'm majoring in biology with minors in chemistry and environmental studies. Sweet, and okay, last but not least. Uh, how's it going, I'm Matt. I'm from Orange County, California. I am a sophomore at Gonzaga, studying English, uh, marketing, and getting my teacher certification in secondary ed. Fantastic. Well, um, I see that so many of you are coming in um, right as people were explaining themselves. So don't worry. Every time a participant asks, answers a question, uh, I'll have them introduce their name again and uh, their major and where they're from and also their year. So just keep that in mind, participants. So 260 people. Man, this room is getting bigger. The ever-expanding room. Well, uh, if you have any questions, which we hope you have lots, please be sure to go to the Q&A section on the bottom right of your screen and ask, our, ask your questions there. It's gonna be easier to access versus the chat feature. Um, but keep in mind, if you wanna ask through the chat, we also have people who are gonna be sending us um, that information in our questions too. So um, students and anyone else who's here, please ask us a question here. Let's see what we got. Ah, okay. Let's see here. A lot of them are popping up. Um, okay, this is, this is a great question here to start off with because uh, a lot of the questions we're looking for are just about the student experience since we're all students. Um, what is student life like at Gonzaga? That's, that's probably the great thing to start out with. Um, I am going to go with Alex first. What is student life like at Gonzaga for you? Wow, thank you, Julian. That was an honor. Um, I'm Alex. Uh, again, I am a junior studying sociology with minors in comm and women and gender studies from Seattle. Um, I would say that, at least for me, speaking for myself, student life has been uh, kind of the aspect that has really like reassured why I picked Gonzaga. Um, I'm sure a lot of people say they made their decision on their tour or um, when they like first stepped foot on campus. And one of those reasons is because when you walk around, like Gonzaga is such a social and happy and inclusive environment that um, pretty much every aspect is like really, I don't really know how to explain it, just like reaffirming of um, the community that we have here. Um, and I feel like everyone is pretty involved with um, some sort of club or organization that really um, makes them feel whole. And I would say that with the kennel and our sports and just kind of the mentality we have around here. It's a very welcoming and warm environment. I would, I would say that if someone else wants to add something. Great, Alex, thank you. Uh, JJ, you wanna add something to this? Uh, and yeah, I just, I think, um, I don't really have too much to add on to what Alex said. I think Alex gave a great answer there, um, but yeah. Very cool, very cool. Um, JJ also is a senior studying uh, mechanical engineering from, yeah. from Boston. Sorry, uh, I forgot to say that part of the introduction. No, no worries, no worries. 315 people, wow, I feel pretty popular. This is awesome, thank you. Um, so moving on to the next question, uh, here's a great one. Uh, what is the typical weekend like at Gonzaga? Anybody first want to answer that question? Show of hands, typical weekend at Gonzaga. Okay, it's like a classroom, I got to pick now. Megan, you're up. Alrighty. Well, once again, I'm Megan. I am from Denver, Colorado, and I am a junior studying nursing. 
Um, and so Colorado is very similar to the Spokane area. And so one of the things to do on the weekends is get outside. There's tons of stuff to do outside. Um, Geo Outdoors is a really big part about Gonzaga and they do trips almost every weekend. So hiking, biking, camping, snowshoeing, skiing, whatever you want to do outside, there's probably a place to do it. Um, and so you can choose to go on one of those trips or there's also um, lots to do around Spokane a lot of shopping, a lot of bike trails, running trails, as well as we also have weekend programming called Spike Nights, who do um, programming every Friday and Saturday night. And it's, they do everything from like bubble soccer to craft night uh, to, to movies on the lawn to, they set up a roller skating rink one time. Um, so there is so many things to do on campus at the weekend. Anyone else want to add to that? Uh, I, I can add one. Oh, sorry, yeah, oh, Matt, please. Sorry, one I'll real quick. Uh, I, again, I'm Matt, a sophomore from Orange, California, uh, English and Ed and Marketing. Um, another thing that Megan mentioned real quick, um, how, how um, it's such an easy walk down to downtown Spokane, uh, down the Centennial Trail, Trail along the Spokane River is just a quick uh, 10, 15 minute walk max down to uh, downtown Spokane. Um, and that's a great opportunity. I know as a first year student, um, not many of you are gonna have cars. So uh, it's nice being able to uh, be able to walk downtown and get some food downtown, experience uh, like what it's like downtown Spokane is uh, another great option to uh, explore on the weekends as well. No, Matt, that's a great point. I appreciate you giving that. And uh, thank you for answering that question. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, okay, pretty simple answer here. Is there a direct bus route to the airport? How much does it cost? Uh, let me go to my, my senior friend, Ryan, here to answer this question. Um, I don't know if there's a direct, like, bus route in my, um, from what I know. I know, though, um, Gonzaga, as a Gonzaga student, you do get um, your Zag card, which is your student ID, gets you a free bus pass around downtown, and I have used it. Um, there's, like, a couple spots um, on the edges of campus where you can be picked up, um, but for me, um, mostly like whenever I go to the airport, I usually like car hop with a friend who has a car or I use like Uber or Lyft. Usually those are like the most convenient ways. Cool, and I'll just hop on to um, like Uber and Lyft is like $20, so it's not that expensive. Um, but if you can't find a person to get you a ride, that's probably the most ideal. Okay, moving on. Um, let's see here. How has your experience with housing been? I want to go to a sophomore here. Uh, Holly, how's your experience been living on campus? Um, I'm Holly. I'm a sophomore from Muckleteo, Washington, and I'm majoring in biology. Um, yeah, my experience with on-campus housing has been great. I lived in Coughlin my freshman year, which is a living learning community residence hall. So each floor of Coughlin has a different theme. So I lived on the learns to lead floor and we do activities based on leadership. And then my sophomore year, I lived in Tui, which was a sweet style. And it was just a great transition from like the traditional residence hall to kind of like getting ready to move into a house next year. Yeah, perfect. And uh, just to add on to that too, I've actually been living on campus all four years. So my first two years as a regular student and then my last two years as an RA uh, or a resident assistant. Um, and I have to say that our housing office really does a great job to accommodate every student with their housing needs and to make sure that students are placed in the right living situation for them. Um, and a question I saw here too is, are LLCs worth it? Um, you know, I think it's kind of a subjective question. I think um, if you live in a building that doesn't have an LLC, you're not going to miss out on any opportunities to make friends or um, bond with your floor or people around you. Um, I just think an LLC is an opportunity to take if you have a very specific focus, like Holly said, like she wants to live on the learns to lead floor, or if you are an engineer, you want to live in the engineering LLC and you want to be around other engineers and whatnot. It's just an opportunity for you to live around people who have a general consensus of agreeing that they want to talk about this or be a part of it in a discussion in an environment where they talk about engineering or learns to lead or global citizenship. So uh, for those of you that do get involved in LLCs, great. For those of you that don't, you're still going to have a great experience. That's what I'll say about that. Um, but okay, let's move on to the next question here. Um, okay. Are any of you guys honor students? I don't think so. Nobody? No? Anyone an honor student? Okay, sorry. Thank you for asking that question. Um, okay, let's see. What, uh, what do you do for fun? How is Spokane? Uh, okay, how is Spokane? Like for uh, anyone want to show hands? How is Spokane in general? Okay, JJ, take it. Uh, I think Spokane's pretty awesome. 
I mean, coming from uh, Massachusetts. Oh, my name is JJ Mechanical Engineering. I'm from uh, north of Boston. Uh, so Spokane has been pretty awesome to me. Uh, it's so convenient how everything is so close within walking distance. I don't have a car, but I never feel like I'm hindered by that. Uh, it's so easy to walk downtown as Matt was talking about. I love trying out new food places. I like to consider I'm a human yelper, but uh, it's just awesome. Uh, you have the movie theater downtown. There's tons of really, really cool events that are really unique to Spokane. Uh, I can't think of many other places that have a combination like the world's largest 12K foot race in Bloomsday, the largest three and three basketball uh, competition and hoop fest, and then also an event as cool as Pig Out in the Park where they bring li literally hundreds of food trucks uh, to downtown Spokane every fall. Great. Thank you for that, JJ. Anyone else? How Spokane? Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm muted myself. Okay, let's move on to our next question here, which is... Do you feel like you're missing out on experiences at a larger school? Uh, Alex, you wanna, you wanna take a stab at this? I was hoping you'd call on me. Um, yeah, so when I was making my uh, Gonzaga experience, oh, sorry, I'm Alex, junior sociology major. Um, I was deciding between Gonzaga and a couple other um, larger four-year universities. And I made like my big pros and cons list for each place. And really when it came down to it, um, yeah, there were things like football that I'd be missing or just like the larger classroom experience. But what makes Gonzaga so unique is um, in terms of student life, I feel like that's one thing that people think um, is a big like hindrance for Gonzaga, but it really isn't because people pick student life um, at Gonzaga over other things. Um, and I feel like Gonzaga compensates for like, I feel like I don't need to have a football team or anything like that because I get that through basketball and just all the other things that we have here. Um, and if you ever really did need to like feel that um, like larger school experience, uh, WSU and UW are on opposite sides of us. So if you have friends there, you can always visit. But um, when it really came down to it, I preferred having like that smaller school um, community and experience within the classroom, just with my friends, things like that. So I don't feel like I'm missing out very much. Cool. Thanks, Alex. Does anyone else have any uh, thing to respond to that? Anything to add on? Anybody want to talk about, um, you know, just going off that uh, small class sizes and how that's been a benefit versus like bigger class sizes that you might get at a bigger university? Um, Megan, please. Um, yeah, so I found that that's a huge part of my learning is having a smaller class size and kind of more intimate classes. Um, and I think at Gonzaga, my biggest class was like 30, which is, you know, big for Gonzaga. Um, and so it really helps to know that like, I can ask a question in class and it's not a big deal. And my professor knows me and knows my name and um, professors have less students. And so there's so much more available to talk to you and get to know you. And they really kind of strive towards that, which is a huge part of my experience at Gonzaga for sure. Awesome, thanks Megan. All right, so let's see here. I have, this is a pretty interesting question. I would like Matt to answer, answer this, but I want Ryan to answer it first. How can you meet people, especially if you're out of state? I only go to Ryan first here because he's actually an international student. So how do you make friends and meet people out of this in a different country, Ryan? Why don't we start with that? Yeah, um, Ryan, senior accounting, and I am originally from the Philippines. I went, lived there my whole life and then moved to Gonzaga. Um, I think just to like meet a lot of people is just to stay involved. You know, when, you, when you're a freshman, you come to campus, just try to go. Um, they... I think by the second week they have club fairs. You can see all the different extracurriculars they offer on campus. Um, just getting to know students more and more, getting that like, you know, less stress of like, oh my gosh, it's my first year freshman year. Like I'm nervous. But when you start meeting people um, through that avenue, through extracurriculars and involvement, um, it starts to be really easy. And you'll meet so many people from like different parts of the world. Like um, when I first like met like my friend, Joe, who's also from Boston, um, I was like, wow, like I didn't know like, there's actually so many people from different states. Um, so yeah. Great, Ryan, thank you. Matt, you're a, you're a California guy like me. What was that like meeting people from different states? Uh, it was super fun, yeah. I love meeting um, people from all around the country too um, and out of the country. Um, and I think uh, the, uh, the quickest way that I met uh, people my freshman year, um, personally in my dorm was through like freshman games. Um, and uh, it's like freshman games is a freshman style tournament with different intramural sports. Um, and I thought of it as uh, freshman game starts 
early enough where you don't really have your solid group of friends yet. So I almost had the, I had the opportunity of doing it with guys in my wing and guys that I lived around. Um, so that was for me a great way to get to know um, everyone in my wing. And it was an opportunity for me to meet the guys around uh, me and being able to bond over uh, losing a heated softball game or winning a football game was a great way to, uh, to meet everyone around me. Uh, and it was a super way, super great way uh, to meet um, all uh, people from all over the country um, and all walks of life, which is super cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Okay. 336 participants. Boy, I'm sure we all feel special. This is awesome. Thank you, everybody. All right. Let's see. Next question. Oh, big question here. Uh, how religious is GU? That's a fantastic question. Um, anybody? I want to go to Holly first, but does anybody else have anything to just show a hand if you want to go after Holly. Okay, Holly, I'm putting you on the spot. Um, I'm Holly. I'm a sophomore uh, majoring in biology. Um, and it's interesting because I'm not religious and I don't come from a religious background. And that was kind of like nervous for me going to GU because I was like, is everyone going to be Catholic? Like, what's that going to be like? And I think it's like totally awesome. And people come from all different religious backgrounds. Um, and just different walks of life. And so I feel totally comfortable. And I even took my religion core class last semester. I took feminist Christian doctrine and it was like super fabulous and I loved it. Cool, thanks Holly, appreciate it. Um, I'll just hop in. I've been going to Catholic school since I was in kindergarten. Um, so I've had a lot of Catholic experience. And I would say that in regards to how religious and Catholic Christian perspective, um, Gonzaga can kind of in many ways be as religious as you want it to be. Um, we have um, a lot of students here who actively participate in um, the Catholic faith and also other Christian communities that are close by. We also um, have spaces for students who are not Catholic or Christian to um, have worship and, have, and pray. And um, I think you'll meet a lot of students who are sort of like myself, raised Catholic, but not necessarily uh, practicing. And you have a lot of students who are practicing in um, a lot of different faiths. So it's, it, we're very open-minded here at Gonzaga. And I think regardless of what your faith is, um, you, won't have a, you won't have an issue here trying to fit in and finding a community. Um, let me just do a quick personal question for Megan. Uh, do nursing students need a car for clinicals or do they have carpools slash shuttle buses? Ooh, very fun question. Um, so you don't need a car. Uh, there will always be more than one nursing student at a specific site and everything. Um, and you'll start going off campus first semester junior year. Um, and so I didn't have a car for this whole year and um, I always just carpooled with other people, found a ride. And kind of like how we were talking about earlier, there is the bus system as well that has free bus rides. So that's definitely an option as well. And if you can't find a ride or anything, they'll work with you on that for sure. Cool, Megan, thank you. All right, this is a, a great question here. And I think it will show that we are gonna be as honest as possible here. So um, there's no faculty here that are sort of constraining what we can say, no censorship, total First Amendment here. Um, what is the partying scene like? And what can you do if you don't like partying? So let's answer this part first. What is the partying scene like at Gonzaga? Um, who wants to answer this question first? What's the, okay, Alex. All right, here we go. I'd say that the party scene at Gonzaga, um, it's definitely not like a four year university, specifically because we don't have Greek life, um, which is another reason why um, people pick on Zaga, including myself. Um, I didn't really think that was for me. Um, but if I always say on my tours and things like, if you want to be engaged with the party scene, you are totally able to, you can find it. Um, but for those who aren't, there's other options and all kinds of other things to do on the weekend. That's what I'll say. Cool, thanks, Alex. And anyone else want to comment on what the partying is like here at Gonzaga? I guess disclaimer, it does exist. So if you had that question, um, great. Uh, okay, and this next part of it is um, what, what do you do um, on the weekend, specifically if you're a freshman student? Um, because I'll, I'll just comment on this first. I think by the time you're a sophomore and certainly a junior or senior, I think you've, you've figured out um, sort of who you are and what your community is here at Gonzaga, who you wanna hang out with, what you wanna do on the weekend. But I, I can see, and I know for myself personally, this is a, a very st stressful question. Uh, what do you do if you don't want to necessarily engage in partying on the weekends, especially as a freshman? What do you do? Um, so anyone else, anyone want to answer that question? Okay, Holly. Um, yeah, I don't really go to parties. Like, that's not my vibe, I guess. So me and my friends like to watch movies, 
together, especially freshman year. We play a lot of like board games and we go to spike nights a lot. I always drag them out for bingo night to go play bingo. <laughs> it's like my favorite night. Um, yeah, so there's tons of things to do and GU Outdoors offers trips on the weekend, which normally leave like Friday afternoons or Saturday mornings. So those trips are always an option too. Cool. Thanks, Holly. Um, I guess my, I'll share personally what I did is I, I played a lot of basketball on Friday nights, Friday and Saturday nights. And um, yeah, the gym's open. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. But okay, let's move on. Thanks, participants. You're all doing great. Um, really happy with how you're answering all these questions. Let's see here. Um, where am I? Okay. Community is brought up a lot. How does GU have a great community? That's a great question. Whoever wrote that, that's a great question. Um, we hear that all the time about Gonzaga. What a great community. But, but why? Somebody want to answer that? All right, Matt. Uh, kind of a loaded question, so I'll kind of uh, answer it. Uh, and then please, Ryan, uh, pick up my missing pieces. But um, I think one way that I personally have uh, been involved and made uh, the community that I want and kind of how I've built my Gonzaga community in my eyes uh, would be, uh, like we mentioned earlier, getting involved. Um, is a great way. And I know uh, how Alex mentioned earlier, we don't necessarily have Greek life, uh, which is not something that's prevalent, prevalent at GU. Um, we do make up for it in how much, how much uh, club opportunities that there are. And you do get that social aspect uh, in being able to uh, join and start as many clubs or anything that you like. So uh, we have a, a office on campus called the Center for Community Engagement. And um, it's a great opportunity to do a service within the Spokane community um, and Spokane and Gonzaga work so well together and Spokane offers so much opportunity for volunteer uh, work to be happen uh, by Gonzaga students and uh, I personally have done lots of work with uh, Spokane middle schools uh, going and being a mentor process in that aspect and uh, joining clubs and different things like that is a great way to meet, meet like-minded people um, and I think uh, if you're choosing Gonzaga and if you're pursuing um, what it's like to be a student at Gonzaga, you are going to find that group of people that is super similar to you and you're going to find common uh, likes and dislikes with people around you. And I think getting involved and uh, building that sense of community around things that are important to you, like personally, like how I've mentioned, service is a great way for me to build that community um, at GU especially. Cool, Matt. Thanks for sharing. Ryan, what did you want to add to that? What's the GU community like? Yeah, I mean, for me, like GU community just like is encompasses, you know, students, um, faculty, staff, alumni. It's crazy to think um, I've spent a couple summers here on campus where not a lot of students are and to like get to know all the Hemmingson staff, uh, the staff at the RFC, everyone like you kind of like build this weird community where everyone starts to like know each other in a way um and it's super cool um i think my favorite part about community that i like to emphasize a lot is the faculty like i've gone to so many professors office hours where it's like time for you to interact with your professors whether you need help or not and just knowing that they're there for you to support whatever like uh dreams or aspirations that you want like my professor literally sat me down and was like hey let's help you figure out this accounting thing and it wasn't even like school really it's just like career um growth wise um so the community is here for you. They're always going to support you. And kind of like what Matt said, you will, you will be able to find it here um, no matter what avenue or what's part of campus life you'll be in. Cool. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I just want to say quick before I go to the next question, uh, we have about 129 questions asked and uh, we have about a little over 30 minutes left. So I want to say first, everybody, um, I don't think we're going to get to all these 129, but I promise you there will be a phase in this uh, Q&A where um, we're going to try to get through as many as we can. I call it the rapid fire section. Um, so please keep these questions coming. And, you know, personally, my, we've never answered all the questions, but I want to. So 130, there's no problem. Give, give me 500 questions. Come on, ask more questions. But okay, let's keep going. So uh, we're going to try to get to all those questions. Don't worry. Let's see here. Um, hmm. Okay, how safe is Spokane? That's a great question. Um, anybody want to ask, uh, answer that question? How safe is Spokane? Well, let me just say this generally. So I, I live in the city of San Francisco um, and I will say that Spokane is like San Francisco, like any other city or uh, wherever else you all live. There are areas that are super safe and then there are areas that are not so safe. So I sometimes think Spokane, I don't know if you've heard, gets a bad rap sometimes for being, oh, it's an unsafe city. 
It's not. It's, it's, it's just as safe as any other city. Um, there's, I don't think there's any sort of um, delineation on that point. Uh, but how safe is the GU campus? Because we are a, a campus that's open 24 hours a day. And how safe are, are students who live off campus? Um, can I have JJ comments on that? And then um, maybe someone who like maybe like Holly or Matt to live on campus, how safe do you feel? So JJ, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Do you want me to answer living on campus or? Um, well, you, live, you, live, you lived off campus, right? Uh, just the last two weeks or so. Oh, okay. You know what? Forget that, JJ. Uh, <laughs> you know, Alex, I want you to answer uh, what it's like, how safe it is off campus. But JJ, why don't you answer um, how safe it is on campus? Yeah, uh, on campus, I feel safe no matter uh, where I am. Um, you always feel really reassured because there's blue light, it's 50 blue lights scattered all throughout campus. And I know that like if at any time I ever feel unsafe and secure, I can always go, go to one of those blue lights, pull out the phone, and I can call campus security. The system's only been used a handful of times in the last couple of years. Um, and I know I have plenty of friends that uh, have made use out of the courtesy ride system that campus security offers. Uh, that's a system that maybe you're in the library late at night and you don't necessarily want to walk home to your residence hall that might be a little bit further away or you might live off campus uh, and you can ask for a courtesy ride. You can also ask for a courtesy ride if uh, you broke your leg and you might find it difficult walking to class in the morning, like Matt over there pointing um, towards ACL. But uh, campus security is there for students all the time and uh, you can immediately, you can feel their presence on campus. But we are also an open campus as Julian just mentioned. So we do have strangers uh, wandering through campus from time to time. And that a lot of times is people coming for a campus tour or coming for a basketball game, whatever it might be. All right, JJ, thank you. Uh, Alex, since you live off campus, uh, what's it like out there in terms of safety and whatnot? Yeah, so typically after your sophomore year, many students will choose to move off of campus um, and they'll live in the Logan neighborhood. Um, my house is about like a six minute walk from campus. So when I'm walking, I'll talk like specifically at night. Um, like Julian said, it's really no different than any other city. Um, you probably like shouldn't walk on like darker sides of the road or whatever really late, but I've never felt or like gotten to a point where I like really was worried about like my physical safety. Um, going off of that, like I usually will like keep my phone nearby just in case, but I've never like felt like I was in some sort of like movie or anything like that. Living off campus is great. Um, it's really nice to have some sort of like separation from school now that I'm a little bit older. Um, and going off of uh, campus security, I actually had one of the officers do like a home check of my house over the summer to like make sure that like if anything did happen, like all of my doors like lock the right way and all of that. So that is a service that campus security can offer you once you move off campus. Um, but I'm also lucky because I'm on a street where there's um, a bunch of zags right around me. Both of my neighbors are zags. So um, it's if I ever need anything, I can always call them or whatever. Cool, and Alex, just to keep you on the line still, um, there was a question about uh, how affordable is it to live off campus? Just quickly add. Oh my gosh, I love this question because um, I'm from Seattle and housing prices are crazy. And when I compare my rent to um, rents in Seattle, it's insane. But um, we got really lucky with this place. Um, it's, pretty brand it's pretty new and our rent is much more affordable than um, other cities, am I allowed to say how much it is, Julian? Oh, this is the student panel, of course. Oh, yeah. So we pay um, around five hundred for us. Um, and then you have like your utilities um, along with that, which are also a lot cheaper than in a bigger city. So um, it's very enticing to probably like stay in Spokane after I graduate just because the housing is so cheap. But yeah, it's pretty. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this next question, I'm looking at Holly right now. This, this, you're going to like this one. Are you ready, Holly? Okay. She's, she looks ready. Are there research opportunities here? Yes, definitely. Um, last summer, um, I was just finishing up my freshman year and I applied for research opportunities in the biology department. So I worked um, in the department over the summer with a faculty member. Um, doing some research on like an invasive species of grass and some fungus um, and there's tons of opportunities not just in the science department but also in the like all across campus. Um, I know that there are grants that you can apply for for like philosophy and history to do like your own research so research is like really accessible and since we don't have like graduate students in the sciences all research goes to undergraduates which is fabulous. 
Cool. Thanks, Holly. Appreciate it. Um, okay, two questions here. Super easy. I'm just going to answer them right off the bat. What other sports are great to support, not including men's basketball? All of them. Uh, we have uh, lots of other sports. Uh, men's basketball, of course, gets the biggest amount of attention, given that they just get a lot of attention because they're great. But women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, men's baseball. Uh, I don't think anybody goes to cross-country meets, but if, if you're a cross-country athlete, that's you kind of understand why. It's kind of hard to watch. Um, men's and women's tennis. We have men's and women's golf. Um, I would say support all the sports because they're all free to attend, which is awesome. Um, can you have a car? Yes, you can. Uh, how much are parking passes? Not very expensive compared to other colleges. Um, I think I think it's ninety dollars a semester. Um, somebody just want to hop on and say how much it is. I think it's a hundred dollars for the year, but I could be wrong. And I only I bought one for a semester, and it was fifty dollars. So. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so not very expensive. So thank you for answering that question. All right, here we go. So this is a question here I think is interesting. What are politics like on campus? Anybody want to raise a hand? Okay, I'll, I'll answer this question. So um, first off, I think this campus, um, first of all, in, in terms of like our national politics, I suppose, we, we do have two clubs um, for our two, two um, prominent national parties. We have a Young Democrats Club and we also have a College Republican. So um, if you would like to associate uh, or join one of those clubs, that's a great thing that you can do. Uh, if you want to talk about uh, conservative politics or democratic politics. Uh, what I will say though, is that I think that this campus um, is pretty liberally oriented, um, lib liberal minded. Um, so I think sometimes um, if you're a conservative, maybe that you, you'll, you'll feel like, oh man, there are uh, a lot of you know, liberal minded people here. But I, I think, I don't know if you could ever do a, a true like poll on this, but I think there are just as many like conservative minded people as there are liberal people here. And I think that this school does a good job of promoting um, conversations uh, about political discourse. And, and we, we try to encourage students um, to do it in a, in a very respectful manner, whether it be in the classroom or off campus. Um, anyone want to comment on that though? Yeah, so you probably saw by my tapestry behind me <laughs> that I have a pretty liberal mindset. Um, but something I wanted to bring up is with my major specifically with sociology, um, we have a lot of these conversations within the classroom. And before I um, started Gonzaga, I wasn't as interested in politics as I am now. But um, with the different like core classes I've been able to take and with my major, I feel a lot more um, knowledgeable and comfortable having those conversations, whether that be with like like-minded people like me or people who are completely on the other side of the spectrum. And I feel that something that's really powerful about GU is like you're able to have those conversations not and have those debates not feel like someone is being attacked or anything like that. Um, so yeah. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate that. Um, so moving on here, my gosh, high demand. I, I can't even count the amount of questions here that have been asked about this. Um, basketball. Um, specifically men's basketball, ticketing process, tent city. Um, what is that like? Let's, let's just, let's, let's, um, let's talk about that. Anybody want to comment on what it's like to get a ticket to one of these games? Cause they're free, but let me tell you, uh, you lose a lot of time. Okay. Megan, I saw your hand. Um, okay. So yeah, it's, uh, you pay with your time, not your money, but so they're free, which is good. Um, so specifically to get tickets, um, they're sort of changing the process a little bit, but for right now it's, usually the Sunday before a game, um, they'll announce there's ticket distribution and it'll happen at like seven o'clock sometimes. Um, and so then depending on how big the game is, you'll get in line. I've gotten in line at like 10 a.m. I've also walked in at seven o'clock. So it kind of just depends on, I don't know, what the students decide. But um, you know, you get in line, you get your group, you, you know, set up a little camp for yourself. People are playing music. I play a lot of cards in line and people kind of take turns and stuff. Um, and so once you finish, once you like get your ticket and stuff, it's just your ID swipe. So that gets you into the game, um, but it doesn't get you uh, a seat in the game. So that comes the day of the game is whenever you get in line is kind of how good your seat is gonna be. So um, some people set up a little tent overnight, even if it's not like a tenting game, or I've also walked in when the game starts as well. And so. I've also gotten in the line at like 5.30 in the morning and I got the third row, not even the first row. So it kind of depends, but I honestly, I think it's really fun to just kind of hang out in line and just like with other Zags and with your friends and just kind of 
I don't know, just be together. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Um, did, did someone else raise their hand? Because I think she did a great job answering all that. But, okay, great. So hopefully that answers all your questions about basketball. Um, let's see. A lot of questions here. Let's see. Okay. Um, are music and theater a big part of campus life, or is it more of an afterthought? Uh, well, first, okay, yeah, Holly, please. Yeah, I'm in the wind ensemble and the bulldog band. And I think like the music and theater programs are just like fabulous. And now that we have like the addition of like the Myrtle Woldson Performing Arts Center on campus, it makes it so much more accessible for like students to attend events and stuff. And I think it's important to note that like most of the participants in the music programs aren't like like majors or minors in music. So like anyone can participate in these programs and I just think they're really great. Thank you. Um, oh, JJ, yes. Yeah, uh, from an outside perspective, not being musically talented at all, I think just attending and watching uh, Gonzaga students, your peers uh, perform in these concerts are absolutely incredible. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is go watch the, uh, the symphony perform. And they bring, in addition to like uh, Gonzaga students and members of the local community that are part of their symphony, uh, for each of their performances, they bring in big name, uh, comp uh, big name artists. Like we had Brandon Cho and Midori come to campus, and it was just absolutely incredible the concert that they all uh, put on. Thanks, JJ, and I guess just to add on to that because I have been a part of some of the theater here. Um, I think it's it's becoming more mainstream um, now that we have this new Merle Wilton Center, like Holly said. I think with every year, um, as more students grow and get get a part of it, um, it becomes more of a big factor on our campus. So uh, it, it's, it's good, it's doing well. Um, okay, so we have, I'm math, I'm a history major, 23 minutes left. And um, in a couple minutes here, um, we're, we're gonna start doing some rapid fire questions just so we can get the ball rolling a little bit because we have a lot of questions to answer. But uh, let me just, well, I wanna focus on these last um, three here before we start moving on to our rapid fire. Um, this first one here is, do you think the administration handled the COVID-19 issue well on campus? Great question, whoever asked it. Um, I saw Alex's hand go up, Alex. Yeah, so when that happened, I was in at home um, for spring break. And then um, it was like the Wednesday that kind of, it's like Seattle shut down and we were waiting to hear what GE was gonna say. Um, and I think they handled it um, as best as they could um, considering like Washington is Pretty, was pretty much a hot spot, um, but I feel way safer in Spokane than I do um, than I would have in another city. I think um, so far we haven't had as many cases as Seattle or um, surrounding areas, and I think that Gonzaga, with partnership with the Spokane Regional Health District and just with the city, um, they've handled it in a really like pretty graceful way as far as um, news has kind of traveled out. Um, of course, we're still waiting to hear what. Um, is what is like left uh, for next year and things. But um, yeah, I would say that they handled it pretty well. Yeah, one thing to add to that too um, is like with this COVID situation, I think our administration does a great job of being open with us. Um, you know, the president of our school sends uh, um, students updates and you know, the provosts and whatnot and these long emails. And, and not, I'm not saying long and bad, but long because they really want to be transparent or as transparent as possible. So I think our administration does a great job of keeping us up to date and also responding to student um, concerns and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, JJ, you wanna add something? Yeah, I was just gonna add, uh, similar to what we're all doing right now, uh, the president of the university, President Thane, uh, did a panel similar to this, where it was just him talking and students were able to submit their questions live and he answered them without any preparation uh, to all of us. And it was just a really great way to get some of our questions answered. Like one of the big topics during that was, what's gonna happen as a senior with our graduation? Um, and so. Uh, I think the amount of transparency and how willing uh, administration is just to talk about this and not have anything hidden behind closed doors. Everything is willing to be talked about. I think that's really great. Cool. Thank you. Um, so um, last two questions here before we move on to our rapid fire phase. Um, where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. So how diverse is Gonzaga and how accepting is it of the LGBTQ plus community? Um, does anybody uh, want to uh, first comment on maybe the um, resources we have here for uh, for students of uh, diverse diverse students and also students of the LGBTQ plus community? 
Okay, I'll do it. Um, so, oh, okay, uh, Alex. Yeah, I'll help you out. Um, I would for so as far as resources, um, a lot of our resources for cultural clubs and things like that are held in Hemmingson. So we have a um, club called the UMEC um, under um, the Dice Office in which all of our cultural clubs kind of run out of. Um, so we have HPIC, which is um, the Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders group, um, BSU, Black Student Union. Um, and then we also have kind of a separate office called the um, Lincoln LGBTQ Plus Center, and they're kind of located in the same place. Um, and those are great because one of my biggest worries coming from home was like, am I gonna be able to find community um, with people that look like me and kind of think like me? Um, so BSU, um, and other clubs like that have been really important to me. Um, but they're also great because they um, offer like a place of solace for those for these people, but also for um, other GU students as well who want to get involved. So every cultural club will have some sort of like event or week. Um, so like BSU and other cultural clubs will have a cultural dinner um, that's open to anyone um, on GU's campus, but also um, outside of GU. Uh, so those are pretty great as far as resources. Thank you. Um, and uh, does anyone want to just comment? Uh, I'll do it. Let's see. How diverse is Gonzaga? How accepting is it of the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I think just it, one thing to think of is that um, this, first of all, is um, a majority white, white um, university. Uh, I think there's like maybe like 25% students of color. Um, and with that fact, I think Gonzaga is very cognizant of it and is, first of all, trying to help the university become more diverse, help the university in terms of the resources, like Alex mentioned with UMEC, uh, the University Multicultural Education Center, and also the DICE office and the Lincoln LGBTQ Plus Center, to sort of helping students learn more about students that are different, who learn more about students who come from different backgrounds, and to find a consensus and build a community of understanding and, and tolerance. Um, I think still, of course, like this whole country, in, in, in many regards, we are still striving to be better every year, to do better, to think more critically, but uh, I, I can't stress enough that um, to have the support from administration, who really is cognizant of this issue, to try to help make Gonzaga a place for everybody um, is very unique, I think, compared to a lot of schools, given that um, our, our administration is very transparent. And there are a lot of students who are collectively trying to help make Gonzaga a more diverse, more accepting, more tolerant place um, for everybody. So that's one thing I'll, I'll just probably say for that. Uh, but thank you for asking that question. Um, Last question here before we do our rapid fire um, seminar, I guess, if you will, is please answer um, questions about the food here on campus. Okay, here we go. So uh, what's on campus food like? Let's just start with that. Um, Ryan, please. Yeah, so there's two main dining halls on campus. Um, the COG is what students call it. Um, it's like our kind of all you can eat style um, endless buffet like you could I've seen people walk in um, it's just one swipe of your student ID and your swipes pack um, some people go in there for five minutes some people stay there for like two three hours it really depends um, the other um, dining spot that we have on campus is called 1887 it's more like um, kind of to-go food so you can usually get stuff taken out like an entree with a couple sides and a drink and then there's like um, Starbucks on campus Wolfgang Puck Pizza um, Subco which is um, like sandwiches and there's also like a lot of surrounding like stores that work with Gonzaga that you can use what we call Bulldog Bucks. It's like a kind of debit money uh, attached to your student meal plans. And you can use that to go eat at like Blaze Pizza, um, Wendy's, Sonic, um, all that great stuff. And usually all these stores are about like within like five, 10 minutes walking distance of campus. So if students are eat a lot of times in those main dining halls, they can like eat somewhere else just for a change like during the week. Come on, Ryan, answer the question though. Is the food good? That's what they're really asking. Oh, that's my bad. Um, yes, the food is good. I am a senior, so I've, I lived off campus for now for two years and I still actually miss the cog. Um, the food's really good and it's timely and it's there, yeah. Thanks, Ryan, I was just putting you on the spot there. Uh, all right, um, anyone want, yeah, let's hear from our sophomore friends. Um, what is it like to eat off campus here? Like, have you go off campus a lot or, because I know our upperclassmen here who live off campus, it's easier for them, but do you eat off campus a lot and is it good? What do you have to say? Let's start with the Holly, then let's go to Matt. Yeah, mostly like during the week I eat on campus, but then Friday and Saturday nights, my friends and I will like go out to a restaurant that takes Bulldog Bucks, which is really fun. Um, so it's really accessible to get food off campus. 
Yeah, I can. Uh, I totally agree with Holly. I think um, I uh, we didn't talk about meal plans much, but um, personally, my f uh, sophomore year, I chose the meal plan uh, with more Bulldog Bucks. Um, and because you get more Bulldog Bucks, you get a little less of the cog swipes. And I think that was super ideal because um, it did allow for more opportunities to eat off campus. Um, and uh, as a sophomore living on campus, uh, you're more closer to uh, those other restaurants that do take Bulldog Bucks. Um, so I was uh, actually right across the street from uh, Qdoba and Caruso's. That was like a pretty frequent spot for uh, a, a dinner or uh, a quick lunch for myself. Um, and I think all the opportunities off campus to eat are super awesome. And um, they balance perfectly with the COG, uh, being able to uh, have like a, a free swipe. And I say free because your parents are paying for it. So it's nice that it's free for us. But um, and then also having the opportunity of being able um, to eat downtown, eat close to campus within walking distance, um, again, with your uh, Bulldog Bucks, which again, in our minds is free. So that's nice. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Matt. Um, okay. We have 14 minutes left. Uh, let's try to get through as many of these questions as possible. 306 participants, 147 questions, 14 minutes. Can we do it? I think so. Okay. Um, and also, please make sure you're putting this in the Q&A, uh, not on the general chat, but in the Q&A side. Okay, let's do this. So, um, how have your AP credits transferred? Well, I guess I'll just simply say that if you have applicable AP credit, um, you can look on our website to see which kind of uh, classes you can maybe get exempt from, or um, if not, I believe the, the credit will just transfer over and you may have credits, but it may not get you out of like English 101, but it's just, it's good to get credit so you can um, register faster. Um, what are some good minors to take for human physiology majors? Um, I'm muting myself. Holly, let me just quickly put you on the spot. Um, minors, because I know your biology is so kind of in the ballpark. Yeah, I think just like looking at the degree worksheets and like seeing what works. I have human phys friends who are minoring in dance. So you can, I think there's a lot of options with what you want to pick. Awesome. Is Gonzaga a dry campus? Yes and no. We have dry residence halls, but it is not a dry campus because there is alcohol served to those students who are 21 and older or anybody in our um, restaurant on the second floor called the Bulldog. And for um, upper division housing, if there is a apartment where there is everyone who is 21 and up, um, you are allowed to drink alcohol in it because it's legal. So it's yes, dry campus if you're under 21. No, it can, it can be undry in certain, moist I suppose, I suppose in certain cases. Anyways, thank you for asking. Uh, how was the transition from California to Washington? Uh, Matt? Yeah, um, I still feel like uh, I'm still trying to figure out what a good winter coat is, but um, uh, but I love the four seasons and I love uh, being able to uh, experience uh, Spokane and Washington in cold weather. Um, I think um, it's super fun experiencing snow for the first time with other people who are from like San Diego, Los Angeles, California, New Mexico, Arizona, places that don't really get lots of snow or any at all. Um, and I think it's a, it's super fun to experience it and play in snowballs and snowmen and all that fun stuff. Um, but I feel like just getting the right clothes, uh, you'll be able to handle it, especially if I like say, if I can do it, I think a lot of people can too. So. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Muted myself. Sweet. Thank you, Matt. Uh, okay. Rapid fire. We got to go faster still. What made you decide to go to Gonzaga? Ryan, I want you to answer that in three bullet points. And then Holly, I want you to answer that in three bullet points. What made you choose to go to Gonzaga? Go, Ryan. Four professors um, visit office. Community, research, and small class sizes. I changed my mind. I want everyone to go. Alex, you're next. Three points. Why'd you choose Gonzaga? Um, oh my gosh. Um, community, uh, faculty, um, opportunity after Gonzaga. Awesome. Megan. Um, it felt like it could be a home, nursing, and Washington. Thank you. JJ. Uh, home away from home, professors, and things just to get involved with on campus. Matt. Service, uh, community, and basketball. Okay, myself. Um, major, not San Francisco, financial aid. Okay, here we go. Um, how is the hype during games and social events? Super hyped. Thanks for asking. What are the most popular clubs at Gonzaga? Um, anyone just 
three of the most popular clubs or organizations. Um, Kennel Club, CCE, which is our uh, Center for Community Engagement. Um, anyone else have, a, have another club? Oh, Alex. Uh, GU Ski and Snowboard is really big. Which is part of GU Outdoors. It's great, thank you. Um, what made you choose Gonzaga from other colleges you had to choose from? We kind of answered that already. Sorry about that. If, you ha if any of you were in the Cure Personalis, could you give some info on that? I don't think anybody was. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's see. What's your favorite thing to do on a Friday night? Oh, sorry. Um, JJ. Uh, you cut out there for a second. Favorite thing to do on a Friday night, you said? Yep. Yeah. Uh, favorite thing to do on a Friday night would just be hanging out with friends. Uh, there's so many different opportunities and events that are going on. Uh, I try and make it to as many of them as I can. Uh, lots of obligations, but it's always fun. Um, I, just to name a few, going downtown to see a movie, uh, trying out a new restaurant, and then just playing board games with friends. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alex, favorite thing to do on Friday? Go. One thing. Going bowling with my roommates. Fantastic. I'll just hop in laundry. I love doing laundry on Fridays. No one else is doing it. Okay. Um, let's see. Hmm. Does the student community get really involved with sports? Holly, go. Yes. Many different ways. Intramurals, club sports, watching sports. Fantastic. I appreciate it. We're, we're trying to get through all these questions, everybody. Here we go. Um, what's it like to be a commuter student at Gonzaga? Uh, my girlfriend's a commuter student. Um, she drives to school every day, does great. Um, do you have to live on campus? Do you have to live on campus your first two years unless you uh, live in the Spokane area. Okay. Oh, what are your favorite late night study spots on campus? This is great. Matt, you go and then Megan. Um, I love sitting on the lounge at the second floor of the Rosar building. <clears throat> the Rosar building is the Ed building. Uh, I feel like it's a hidden gem. Uh, Megan, Megan looked like she was nodding her head, but um, it's a beautiful spot. It uh, looks at Hemmingson, uh, one of the big uh, spots on campus, and it's super quiet, and I like being there because it's uh, the Ed, part, Ed Department. Um, yes, yeah, so I've spent many weekend at Rosar. I do first floor, so maybe that's the better one. Um, and then Hemmingson third floor rotunda, there's kind of this like desk thing so you can stand or sit, which is huge for, I don't know, studying for a long time. Library works for me and also too, um, all of our, um, all of our college, um, our college, of course it's college, all of our student, um, what am I trying to say, classroom, all of our classrooms are open 24 hours so you can find a classroom, it's pretty awesome. Okay, is anyone in the honors program? No. But um, can anyone handle, can they handle the coursework? Uh, from what I heard, being an honor student, it's a lot of work, but if you got into the honors program, you can handle it. Anyone else agree with that? Not ahead? Yep, okay, you got this, honor student. International student life. Ryan, quick summary, what's it like? Um, it's definitely tough just being far away from family and home, but um, the community here, uh, you find ways of things that you do to distract off your head and it makes uh, going home a lot sweeter. Thanks, Ryan. What are your opinions on dorm rooms at Gonzaga? They get the job done. That's what I'll say about that. They're pretty good on size. If you want to move your whole room from home in, not going to happen, but it's pretty good. Pretty good. Two people in a room typically gets the job done. Is it hard to get the men's basketball game tickets? Um, I'm seeing a lot of no's. It can be. I mean, for it depends on the game, but uh, I would say typically no. Um, just be prepared to get in line. All right. Mm-hmm. How difficult was it to adjust to college life from high school life? Um, I guess everybody just say one quick thing. Ryan, starting with you. Um, free time. It's a lot harder uh, just because you have more free time. So you kind of have to organize or manage yourself better. Gotcha. Uh, Alex? Um, time management with that. Um, really get in on yourself to get your work done. Uh, Holly? Yeah, just reiterating, time management is really important. Megan? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say time management. It's something I'm still figuring out now. So it's a work in progress. <laughs> uh, Matt? I think a uh, routine, finding a routine is super important uh, because what's different is you're living at GU now and uh, being able to separate kind of school and friends and extracurriculars and being able to find a routine that balances all that. So that's super important. Cool. JJ? Uh, time management again. I started making a calendar for the first time when I was in college. So that was huh. a change. Cool. Um, I guess for me, um, just remembering that I'm in college and not in high school anymore. 
Uh, I'm a confident person. I'm an adult now. I make my own decisions. And uh, I like, you know, if you want to eat alone in the cafeteria, no one's going to judge you. That's what I'd say about that. All right. Um, hmm. Quickly, Claire, uh, not Claire, Holly. I don't know why I said Claire. Who is Claire? I don't know. For the bio major, is it tough balancing social life, clubs, space? How do you live your life as a biology major? Is it hard? Uh, time management and just making sure you plan ahead to get stuff done, but totally manageable. Cool. Thank you. How do you guys feel about the surrounding area and neighborhood that the school is located in? Okay. Uh, let's just go Alice because she lives out there and then Megan next. Go. I love it. Um, I have an across the street neighbor who's um, an older lady and she makes those cookies all the time. So that's really nice. Yeah, it's really fun. My whole block is Zags and there's always someone you're going to run into when you're walking around in the Logan. So great community on and off campus. Oh, one, one final thing. The, um, most of the neighbors like within the Logan neighborhood really enjoy having Zags around. So um, like moving in, usually they're like really nice. Cool, thank you. All right, we have four minutes. We're under the gun. We gotta go faster. Uh, would you rent? Would you recommend Kath and Monica or see them as a residence hall? Yes, I'd recommend all of them to answer that question. They're all good. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. How would you describe the core curriculum? Is it restrictive, or do you feel like it gives you more freedom to explore their interests? Um, that's a great question. Just quickly, uh, Matt and uh, Ryan, what's your experience with the core curriculum? Uh, Matt, go. Yeah, um, uh, I love taking core classes. And for me, it was an opportunity uh, to find other places um, that I was like wanting to explore. And for me, it was like a big reason why I chose marketing as well as a minor uh, to go with my English major. I found out that I just loved comm classes and I figured um, being able to articulate and being able to communicate the best that I can. Um, I thought, how can I do this? Um, as well as like being English and ed and how is that going to tie in? Um, so finding the, having to take those core classes um, is a great opportunity to find other interests that you didn't know that you had and finding ways to kind of like reroute it back into you, uh, into the little sheet of paper that you're going to get at the end of four years. Cool. Thank you, Ryan. Forget it. Let's give you another question. We have to move on. Okay. Um, hmm. Do students go home on the weekends? Um, no, I wouldn't say typically unless you live close by. It's hard to build community if you keep going home. Uh, are there a lot of intramural sports? Ryan, go. Yeah, there's tons of tournaments. Uh, usually students try to buy in for like a intramural championship shirt, but it's like basketball, soccer, volleyball, freshman games. Badminton's my favorite, but uh, we can talk about that later. All participation levels, so whether you're great or whether you're not too good, men's and women's teams, co-eds, all good. Uh, is Spokane an interesting, an interesting place to be? Megan, go. I think Spokane is super interesting and it's really starting to get bigger and more things are happening. So it's been a really cool place to live for the last three years. Awesome. Uh, from California, how do you adjust to the weather? You deal with it. Get a winter coat. Uh, can freshmen have cars? Yes. Um, okay. Last question. We're going to go around to everybody here. Um, so still try to be brief. We have two questions. Two minutes left. What experiences, what, what has been the most, um, okay, how do I make this question? What experience are you most happy about that you want to share with everybody here at Gonzaga. So um, JJ, go first, quick. Um, I think uh, my favorite experience is when I walked into class uh, fall semester, sophomore year, uh, I'd never met the professor that I had before. I was tired, I was groggy. Uh, professor greeted me at the door with my name. I would never met him. He took the time to memorize every single student, all four sections of his class, his name, based off the two by four photo that everyone has to upload uh, that goes on their Zag card. So that was really really meant a lot. Cool, thank you. Megan, favorite thing? Um, it's so hard to choose, but I think just like sitting in Hemmingson, which is our student center, watching people walk by, chatting with people who come by, and the best place to procrastinate homework. Um, I think it's just a really big um, symbol of the community at Gonzaga, and so that's just my favorite place. Matt, go. Uh, I have a job on campus, and uh, I work in the visit office, um, and I think uh, being able to uh, work on campus and be able to uh, be a part of working towards my education is a great opportunity for me. And the community that I have built within that office is so special. And a lot of the work is like kind of this work where being able to talk to seniors and prospective families and being able to outreach uh, to all you guys, which is super fun. Okay, Holly, Alex, Ryan, even faster. Go, Holly, go. Um, I like making breakfast with my friends like in the communal kitchen in the residence halls. 
That's awesome. Okay, Alex, go. Um, similar to both Megan and Matt, I would walk from class or from Hemington or something, probably on like the first really good spring day when the sun is out and music is playing and everyone is going through passing period and just seeing um, all of your friends walk by and even people you don't know and then walking into the visit office ready for work and yeah. Okay, Ryan, take us home. Um, the recently West Coast Conference Tournament in Vegas, um, just knowing that the Gonzaga community feeling that you experience on campus lives long in alumni. And that was pretty cool to see. Cool. All right, everyone, that's all the time we have left. Um, thank you to all of our panelists for being a part of this. Um, thank you for asking all your questions. Uh, we didn't, we answered a lot, but we didn't get to all of them. Um, but if you have more questions, you can always reach out to the admission office, 509-313-6572. Um, Give us a call. I'll probably answer it. Um, but next, I want to pass it off to Sandra, the visit coordinator, uh, just to sort of close this session. Yeah, hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, on behalf of myself and all of my colleagues in undergraduate admission, we so wish we were able to have you on campus with us in person, um, but we are so thrilled to be able to meet so many of you today in so many different um, ways virtually. Um, there are continued ways for you to engage with us virtually. So one of my colleagues is, is gonna put a link in the chat now um, where you can sign up for more virtual student panels if you still have questions that didn't get answered as well as virtual information sessions and admitted student events. Um, so we would love to continue chatting with you and answering your questions. But again, thank you so, so, so much for joining us today. Um, go Zags and have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. Bye everybody.